yet, have they? No, but, but they will. Oh, please, Bill, let me give myself up. It isn't you they're after. They want me. Why don't you? This is why. <sighs> well, we'll have to stop at the next gas station. Bill, I hate to stop for anything. Well, we can't run without gas. Just getting ready to close up. We're almost out of gas. Can't you fill it up? I suppose so. From California, huh? Yeah. Why? Oh, nothing. A lot of California cars pass through here. I wonder sometimes where they're heading. Why did he say that? Just to make conversation, probably. I don't believe it. There must be some reason why he's so curious. Take it easy, Nina. We can't suspect everybody. That'll be 322. Sit tight. I'll have you change in a minute. Hello? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they are. Okay, you better get over here in a hurry. Hey, hey, what about the change? Maybe they're following us. No, they're not, sweet. Try to relax. I do wish I had a cigarette. Try the compartment. Might be some in there. Why are these two running away, Bill Jones and Nina Petrovka? What is this fear which has sent them racing along a lonely Arizona road? Have they murdered someone? Are the police pursuing them? Is it the Immigration Department or the FBI? Possibly it is none of these. They could be running from something far more terrifying. To understand, we must go back with Bill Jones, back on the wings of his tortured memory to a city in California.
I'm sorry, but after you've paid your money down on a home and lot, there's nothing we can do. You mean the government won't do anything after I get fleeced out of my last 2,500 bucks? We can't do anything. These real estate firms are not controlled by the government. We try to warn the veterans, but they're impatient. Sure, the veterans are always impatient, always wrong. But why don't you do something about the way these real estate outfits operate and advertise so a guy don't end up with a scrubby lot on a hillside way out of town? Yes, we're trying to. But, Jones, you didn't consult us. You didn't even read the small print on your contract. Well, that's what I've been hearing every place I go. So I'm just stuck. That's all there is to it, huh? Oh, no. No, we're investigating these uh, housing projects, but it takes time. And unfortunately, there are other veterans in the same boat. Waiting for the same answer I got, the same old runaround. I'm going to tell other GIs the kind of a deal they'll get here. Let's not have any disturbance, fella. Move on. I can move on my own power. Kind of push you around, don't they? Who wants to know? Just another poor sap who's been getting the same routine you have. They cut and dry it special for GIs up there. It makes me so hot, I'd... I'd like to pace somebody. Getting hot won't do any good, but, uh... I know a nice place to cool off. Okay, I can stand plenty of cooling. Conspicuous, just sort of a club for discriminating people. How are you today, Mr. Tyler? Ah, uh, just fine, Bill. How's the bourbon situation? I might be able to rustle up a little Kentucky. That's the spirit. I'll take mine with water. Same. Looks like Tyler's got another prospect. Molly. Please, Henry. Don't make it more difficult. Uh-uh. This one's on me. Get lucky today and hit a two-horse parlay. Jack. Excuse me. Hi, Yvonne. How about bringing Pig and Brawny over to the table? He's decidedly my type. Never saw one yet that wasn't your type. Never mind the personalities. I said I wanted to meet him. Sure. To jail with real estate agents. Life terms. <laughs> Who's the criminal? Two more drinks and you'll be giving him the electric chair. Sure, if it isn't Molly O'Flaherty. Don't you love the way he kicks that Irish around? I uh, don't believe I've met your friend, have I? Just met him myself. Try Bill. He'll answer to that. Bill Jones. Jones. The name is familiar. I've heard it or seen it someplace. You must sit up nights reading phone books. <laughs> <laughs> Have a drink, Molly? Hey, you talked me into it. Better make that three doubles. We've got a lot of important drinking to do. Bill just got caught in the same deal that I did. Another pigeon who had his wings clipped. Oh, not that GI housing project. The project without the housing. It's a funny thing about those GIs. You hear a lot about them but you don't see much about it in the papers. They don't print that kind of stuff. Might frighten other suckers away. All this talk isn't going to help. When's somebody going to do something about it? Somebody is. Yeah? Who? Oh, friends of mine. They had me watching that office. 
checking on veterans who had complaints. We're getting a pretty good list. Well, you can count me in if it'll stop other GIs from getting hurt. You're a good Joe, Bill. I'll speak to my friends about you. Okay. Just so you don't see anything bad, it'll come back to Molly. <laughs> No reason why we should both drink solo. Why do you waste your time, Yvonne? You and I can sit together and still be solo. You know, Henry, I wouldn't be surprised if you really wrote a great poem. Why the sudden confidence in my talent? They say a poet can only produce great art when his heart is really touched. <laughs> when yours is being torn out and wiped on the floor. The bar room floor. Who's the girl you were going to build a little castle in the clouds for? Girl? <laughs> Don't tell me you were going to live alone and try to like it. There was a girl when I built a house. She... She settled for something a little nearer the earth. Let's hope she lives unhappily ever after. Let's leave her out of this. I hate to break up this cheery little wake, but uh, I've got to meet Partridge. He's one of those friends I was telling you about. Go ahead. I'll try to get him up in the clouds again. Good. Look, Bill, meet me here tomorrow. I'll tell you more about these friends of mine. I'll be around. So, I see who's... Type he is. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Molly moved right in. Oh, I wouldn't want to compete with Molly and lose my amateur standing. Hi, Sam. How's it going? Oh, I've been up all night working on a rewrite. What's the matter with Holder? Can he give you a hand? He's not here anymore. What happened? Mr. Partridge been around? Yeah, he's in there. Thanks, Sam. Come in. Hello, Mr. Partridge. Come in, sit down, keep quiet. Continue. How can I compete with other papers if my best reporters disappear overnight? Holder was not only an ace newspaper man, he was a linguist. And he talked too much about party matters and bars to his non-communist friends. Well, we all do that. Well, then we'll all get what Holder did. His party card has been sent to the State Department. They'll check it against his immigration papers, and he'll be deported to his homeland, where they know how to shut mouths permanently. Well, he'll be a hard man to replace. Oh, we can all be replaced. This paper could get a new editor within an hour's time. Even I, as the head of the committee, could be replaced in no time at all. And you will be replaced, unless you bring in some recruits who are not hobos and stumble bones. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Partridge. I collared a good one today. Bill Jones, 100% American type, good war record, plenty of gripes. Sounds all right. Does he know that he's not joining a tea party? I don't think we'll have to worry about that. If we promise him justice for the G.I.s and maybe a job for himself, he'll go for it. Promise him anything. When we get him into the party, he'll find it's not so easy to get out. <laughs> Pardon me if I say well. Now that you're properly impressed, you can relax and have a good time. Remember, you only came up for one drink. Uh, I've got a very short memory. Except for pretty faces. <laughs> you better keep your mind on the drink, Mr. J. You turn on the phonograph while I do the mixing.
Well. <laughs> What's the matter? Who died and left you the fancy library? Sir, you're referring to the books I love. The Coming Dawn. Kind of heavy going, aren't they? Mm, at first, maybe. But you get to understand them if you stick at it. I always heard Kami's peddled bunk. I didn't know they came as cute as you. And you're not going to be shocked and walk out? What's there to be shocked about? I just think it's funny, that's all. There's nothing so funny about it. Not if you stop to realize that the, the party's been behind every decent cause in this country. The war against fascism and the labor movement. Look what it's doing today, fighting for the minorities, the Jews and the Negroes. Oh, I can't get steamed up over causes anymore. Except for the Boy Scouts. I still believe in Santa Claus. I never got to know much about Santa Claus. When I was a kid, my father got starvation pay in a shop that wasn't organized. My mother broke her back over the stove and wash tubs, trying to make ends meet. You must have uh, come up on a fast elevator. I came up the hard way. Factory jobs and night school. And then I found out some of my friends were in the party. They started helping me, giving me a different slant on things. They showed me it wasn't me or my folks that were wrong. It, it, it was the system. Well, I'll admit I don't understand all the ideology and some of the big words. But I do know what they're trying to do. To end once and for all the exploitation of humanity. That's the only cause of poverty and suffering. Pretty big speech for a little gal. But I mean it, Bill. Why do you think we're so interested in you? Can't be my money. It's because you lost your money in that housing deal. That's the kind of thing the party's fighting against. We're for people, not for privileges or property. Sounds good, anyway. <laughs> We're getting too serious. May I have this dance, Mr. Jones? Sure. This in the Boy Scouts. Bill, maybe you better go home. Uh, take this along, read it. So, it's all been just a come on for the party. Oh, don't say that, Bill. I guess so. I was here last night. But I heard you had company. So I went home. I thought you were going to stop drinking. Well, I didn't. Oh, look, Ma, I'm not a kid anymore, and you're not going to treat me like one. What's the matter? Didn't you get your check? Yes, Molly, I got it. And I brought it back. You brought it back? Why? Isn't it big enough? I don't want that kind of money. You told me you were a secretary to a big stockbroker. You said that's why you could afford a place like this, and all those clothes and things. Well, I suppose you've been listening to those mixed gossiping over at church. And Father Leary. That's what I thought it was, just gossip. It couldn't be true, not about my Molly. Then I decided to find out for myself. So you found out I'm a communist. Well, what's so wrong about that? There's no law against it. Well, if it isn't wrong, why should you lie about it to your own mother? I don't even know what communism means. But it can't be good making you do these things. What things? What was the woman in the Bible doing that was taken in sin? Look, Ma, I don't care anything about that Bible junk. I'm doing all right, and I belong to a party that's going to make the world over. 
that people don't get the kind of a raw deal my father got. What raw deal? Your father worked hard and made a respectable home for us. He and I tried to bring you up the best we could. But it's beginning to look like we didn't do a very good job of it. Oh, what's the use? You don't understand. I guess I don't. The only thing I can do is keep on praying. Protest meeting, GI's attention. The Hillside Veterans Housing Project is defrauding ex-servicemen by selling them city lots which have no public utilities or building prospects. Demand action from your district attorney's office, your city council, and the grand jury. G.I.'s protest. That's the idea. That ought to stir them up. You know it's a shame about those poor boys, the defenders of our country, stripped of their pension or their life savings. <laughs> that sounds like one of my editorials. <laughs> well, I better be on my way. Oh, you, you'll have to wait for Nina. She's in charge of the picketing, she and Yvonne. Women in charge of a demonstration like that? There might be some rough stuff, fist fights, a few broken heads. Well, I'm afraid that you've forgotten Nina's background. She was a communist in Europe years ago, and she knows strategy and tactics. Thanks for the kind words. Hello, Nina. Hi, Hello. Nina. How are you today, Miss Nina? Fine, Sam. Very good. I have arranged to have some students and professors in the crowd. And I'm going to have a flock of G.I.s there, spearheaded by some of our tough recruits, like Bill Jones. Mm, he's still playing along? I'm getting more steamed up every day. He's so sore at the housing project and the government, he'd swallow anything. <laughs> good. Nina, you might give him a little special attention. All right, Earl. Let's get on. The introduction of Bill Jones to communist strategy. A misguided young man fallen under the spell of Marxian hatred and revenge, unaware that he is only the tool of men who would destroy his country. The signs didn't tell of the worldwide Marxist racket intent on spreading dissension and treason. Give these to the GIs over there. Yeah, Jack. Right. There he is! That's the guy that got our money! Get me, boy! Let's see some action! Show them what we're here for! Let them see we mean business! They can't steal our money and get away with it! We ought to rush the place! Let's break up the joint! Let's pull down them signs! Get rid of these. Huh? Take my arm, start walking. Okay. Come on. Let's go. All right, break it up now. Come on, clear the sidewalk. It's supposed to be a free country. It wouldn't be if you kind had their way. Come on, let's go. Buy the tickets, darling. being taken for a ride, but why pick me out? You seemed to be in such a daze back there. I had to do something. What did I do wrong? 
You are nervous, aren't you? You're fortunate you weren't arrested. I guess you wonder who I am. You didn't give me time to wonder. I'm Nina Petrovka. Glad to know you. I'm... I know. You are Bill Jones. Partridge told me to keep an eye on you. Oh, I didn't think I needed a bodyguard. You didn't think so? Look. Some of them might be on their way to jail. Well, I don't exactly like the idea of running out on those guys. Very noble, Mr. Jones, but not very practical. We all have a job to do, and you can't very well do it in jail. It's one of the first things you learn. You make me feel like a kid talking to a school mom. Well, I am a school teacher, only not the usual kind. I'm one of the instructors for the party. You mean the party runs regular schools? That's right. They want the recruits to learn the ropes from old hands like me. I practically grew up in the party in Europe. Well, if you grew up that way, I can understand you being a communist. But, um... You're not very sure about Bill Jones. Just suppose I should ask you what communism is. Well, it's the idea of everybody sharing things equally, isn't it? It's the average American opinion. You better get to my classes and get your eyes open. What if a student asks for a date with a teacher? Take that up after you are a student. Good night. Just like that? The ride is over, Mr. Jones. Well, that's no way to coax pupils into the party. Remember, I'm not Molly. The party's getting rough. doctrine is founded on the teaching of Karl Marx as embodied in his book, The Capital, and his later works and pamphlets. The basis of this doctrine is the... Two nights later, the opening of class at the workers' school finds Bill Jones and other party recruits studying Marxism, its principles, strategy, and tactics. Nina Petrovka, chosen for the introductory lecture because of her charm and personality, explains the basis of communism. It teaches that man and his world are the product of natural forces that are constantly changing. There are no positive values, no eternal principles of right and wrong. Actually, it is the old doctrine of atheism, sugar-coated with highbrow terms. It says that men are not responsible to anyone except the totalitarian socialist state. Marx, Engels, Lenin, Stalin, the apostles of the communist gospel. These are the words of the foremost living communist, Joseph Stalin. And yet the American communists deny that they want to overthrow our government by force. Fellow workers, I'm going to ask you a very important question today. What is democracy? As the class advances, other lecturers pound home communist doctrines. Partridge sneers at democracy as a delusion created by Christianity. He sings the old Marxian song that religion is a narcotic devised to make the workers endure their chains. But Bill and the other students are not told that in the true communist state, all form of disagreement is forbidden, that the freedom which they are offering to the workers would immediately be suppressed. Tonight, we shall begin our discussion of strategy and tactics. Let us be frank, comrades. All around us, we see the bourgeois institutions which are devised to exploit the workers and enrich the capitalistic exploiters. These institutions are the dollar-dominated press and radio, the fascistic churches, the red-baiting senators and congressmen, the befuddled and outdated American laws that stifle progress. 
Nothing must stand in the way of the onward march of democracy. You have another one of your questions, Comrade Riachi? Yeah. <clears throat> Just what do you mean by democracy, Miss Krauss? Well, we mean rule by the people. What else? Rule by all of the people? Of course. Well, then, what do our textbooks mean by dictatorship of the proletariat? Dictatorship by one class ain't, ain't democracy. Those things would all be clear to anyone with a proper attitude. But the truth don't change according to somebody's attitude. There's only one kind of truth. That is the Communist Party truth as seen by Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. But they want to they wanna overthrow all governments, even the American government, by force and violence. Then we'll overthrow it by force and violence. We'll have our way if it means bloodshed and terror. If we have to liquidate a million milk sops like you. My friends, my friends, is this the kind of democracy you want? Is this the kind of world? He's worse than a fascist. He's a Mussolini spawned Dago who wants to grovel at the feet of the exploiters of his own people. Dago, huh? And you're the people who preach tolerance. Peaceful progress, respect for civil liberties. Well, I tell you, this is the greatest fraud ever perpetrated in a democratic country. Hey, hey, what's the matter with you guys? Don't you recognize a lot of phonies when you hear them? Yeah, sure. Be too bad if you had to shoot your mouth off about this. Well, I'm going to tell them just what I found out. Oh! Hey, wait a minute! Is it getting to be too much even for you, Nina? After all those years in the party? You knew about the communist goon squads who take care of the Riachis, the little men who dare to raise their voices. These are the people who rant about the injustice of capitalist democracy. What's the matter with you, Nina? Weak stomach? Or is it your loyalty? I'll be able to make it for the meeting tonight. Why not? We've been counting on you as usual. Oh, well, <laughs> take this night off then and get some rest. <laughs> All right, Nina. Nina's sick. She's been working pretty hard lately. I hope it's nothing serious. It might be more serious than you think. I'm beginning to wonder about Nina. Nice little place. Do you come here often? When I want to get away from party members. I'd like to do that sometimes. Sort of play hooky. I know. Food and wine are very good in here. It's pot au feu. You take what you get. It's uh, what you call grabbing a bag. <laughs> Grab bag. Oh, silence, yeah? 
Comment ça va ce soir, madame? Oh, très bien, merci, mademoiselle. Hein, monsieur? Ça va? the guy the song brings back. It wasn't the song and it wasn't the guy. I was just thinking. Are you worried about something, Nina? Why? That distant look in your eye. How is it up there on cloud seven? A little lonesome. I guess I'll stay down until I'm firmer. You know, this is kind of an anniversary. You took me up in the clouds three months ago today. On the Ferris wheel. Don't tell me you kept track of it. Yeah. Only I wasn't going to mention it. I was afraid it might sound foolish. Why should it? A woman likes to hear foolish things like that. See how wrong a guy can be? I thought you were only a cold-hearted schoolteacher. Here you've got real flesh and blood just like anybody else. Bill. Yeah. In the part of Europe I come from, women learn to be natural. They say what they think and feel. I don't have to tell you how I feel. It's being talked about. They say that you're joining the party because of how you feel about me. Well, can I still feel that way if I don't join the party? You mean you don't believe in it? Some of their ideas might be all right, but I can't say I approve the methods they use to put them across. This Riachi thing, for instance. I wouldn't talk about Riachi, Bill. As to their methods, my father didn't like them either. Even though he was a party leader. Is he still over there? He was shot by the communists. Oh, I'm sorry, Nina. Yvonne! What are you doing here? Just looking around. Wonderful atmosphere, isn't it? For curing a sick headache. Or whatever ails you. You know, darling, you should be careful what you say. Other people might hear you and not understand what a loyal party member you are. Other people may not be eavesdropping. Of course, they might make an exception in your case. You and Molly are so gifted at wooing men into the party. Tell me Mr. Partridge is here. He's in the office. Mr. Solomon is waiting to see him. More of your epic poetry for our next issue, I suppose. Well, I wouldn't call it epic, but at least it's honest. Honest, safe and sane. It's about as revolutionary as a tabby cat. <laughs> she won't be satisfied until they start printing the paper in red ink. You know why Nina missed that meeting? She wasn't sick. She had a date with Bill Jones. Oh, well, we can't object to a little romance now and then. In fact, I'd recommend it for some other party members. It might calm them down a little. You can worry about my emotions if you want to, but at least you don't have to worry about my party loyalty. It's more than I can say for Nina. That's a serious charge, Yvonne. It was meant to be. No wonder she can't stand the sight of a disloyal ingrate like Riachi being beaten. She was defending her traitor father to Bill Jones. Would you like me to have the boys keep an eye on her? It certainly wouldn't hurt. Nina wouldn't be the first foreign communist who came over here and got a crush on Uncle Sam. I can't believe that. Not about Nina. She's been a party member since she was a child. However, if she develops any American loyalties, her card can be sent to the State Department and she'll be deported. And Nina has had personal experience of how the party over there deals with traitors. People like Nina forget that sometimes. But I'll be very happy to remind her. Hello, Henry. How'd they like the poem? Oh, fair, I guess. Mmm. Beautiful roses. Yes, they are lovely. But I don't know who sent them, and I hope you're not going to be jealous again. I, I guess I do get kind of possessive at times. But there are things that I believe in as theories that need working on, and I haven't We've really... been through all that, dear, and I've told you I can't believe one way and act another. I 
You're just a little kid that doesn't know what she believes in. Incidentally, I'm the admirer that sent those roses. You did? Oh, darling, that was sweet. Oh, hello, Father. Hello, Molly. I was in the neighborhood seeing the Mulcahy, so I thought I'd drop by. Well, I, I'm glad you did. Won't you come in? I'm sorry I didn't know you had company. Oh, that's all right. Father Leary, this is Henry Solomon. How are you, lad? I'm glad to know you. How do you do? Mr. Solomon's a friend of mine. If you came for the reason I think, I'd just as soon have him here for the sermon. Confidentially, sermons bore me, even my own. Well, sit down, children, sit down. You don't have to stand on ceremony with me. Would you care for a cigarette, Father? Or a drink, maybe? Oh, I'd settle for a cigarette. I could stand a little nip, but it wouldn't be cricket. Right after me making Mulcahy sign the pledge. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Mulcahy. She has her problems. Six children and a drinking husband. If it weren't for Father Leary and my mother, I don't know how they'd live. Drinking is caused by frustration, and that can't be cured by charity. The whole system has to be changed. Sure, lad. But well, what are the children supposed to eat while you're doing the changing? Or should I say, waiting for the revolution? Revolution? What does he know about a revolution, Molly? Well, there's no sense in even discussing it. That's right. We might as well get to the point of your visit, Father. My mother sent you here to talk me out of being a communist. But I happen to be of age, and I'll think the way I please. And without the dictation of a prejudiced mother of the thunders of an outworn medieval church. My, my. This sounds like a worse case than Mulcahy's. To be settled, I suppose, by another pledge. A loyalty pledge. That might help. If you folks really understood what you were pledging yourselves to. I thought we weren't going to have any sermons, Father. We're not. We're going to let money talk. Have you got a half a dollar, lad? Half a dollar? Yes. I think so. Thank you. You see what it says on this side of the coin? E pluribus unum. And if you remember your school day Latin, you know what it means. One out of many. And that's the genius of America. We're not Irish or English or Jewish or Russian. We're all of them. We've taken the best they had and forged them into a common bond. The old melting pot idea, all right. But how does that solve the, uh, the problems of today? Because the melting pot is still working. We still absorb anything that's good from other peoples. So we're different. The communists say they have all the answers. <laughs> they sound like Mulcahy talking through his beer. Now, you see what it says on the other side? In God we trust. God isn't very popular in some circles today, just as he wasn't in a lot of countries and systems that are forgotten and buried. Well, I should think that all depends on what you mean by God. God is the being that puts something in here that makes you want a better world. Atheistic systems are always founded on hatred. Race hatred when they're Nazi, class hatred when they're communistic. There's an old saying that the dice of God are always loaded. Sure they are. They're loaded on the sight of the people who trust in him. Here's your coin, lad. Maybe I'd better put this in the pool box. Thanks a lot. Charity covers a multitude of ideologies.
As you all probably know, this meeting was called by the National Committee. One of the important duties of the party committee is to study and direct the works of communist writers, scientists, and musicians, and to see that their efforts do not deviate from the approved party line. One of the members of this group has been accused of such deviation. Henry Solomon's poem, written in honor of Karl Marx, has been found objectionable. Well, that, that poem was submitted months ago. Why should the committee suddenly find it out of line? Are you putting your puny mind up against the committees? I'm just wondering whether it was the committee that found that poem objectionable or whether that decision came from some higher body outside of this country. Henry, why don't you let Mr. Partridge continue so that we can hear what the objection is? In your poem, you spoke of Marx making the ancient dream of paradise breathe on earth, about opening graves where liberty sleep and old ghosts springing forth. These phrases would indicate that Marx merely carried on the work of other men instead of originating his own doctrine. This is ridiculous. Every student knows that Marx developed the ideas of Hegel, and these went way back to Democritus in ancient Greece. You see, he is a deviationist. I knew it all along. Are you conducting this meeting, Ivan? Do you mean to tell me that just because I'm a communist, I have to deny the facts of biography and history? You must follow the communist conception of history, Mr. Solomon. We contend that Karl Marx had no basis in Hegel, Democritus, or anybody else. I heard of things like this being put over in communist-dominated countries. Philosophers being compelled to deny the facts they uncovered. Musicians forced to compose the kind of music that ignorant commissars demanded, and poets and journalists denied the freedom of expression. Oh, but I never thought I'd find injustice like this in America. Solomon, there's just one issue here. Will you or will you not publicly retract the opinions you expressed in this poem. I'd rather say that the issue is whether I, as an American citizen, as well as a communist, have the right to freedom of expression and opinion. Henry, you should know better than that. What you call freedom is license, the license to put your own will against the party line. In all my years in the party, I thought that I could be an American Democrat and a communist at the same time, that if it came to an issue, some of the teachings of Marx might be abandoned. See, now I was wrong. Under the circumstances, I find no alternative but to withdraw from the party. Now that I'm no longer fettered by a dictatorship, I can tell you trained red seals a few of the things that have been on my mind. You shout about progress and reforms and entice young progressives into the party. When behind their backs in your council meetings, you sneer at them as weak-minded simpletons for being stupid enough to join. I found this, this committee to be made up chiefly of psychopathic misfits who are seeking an outlet for their frustrations and failures. Only people like that could accept the party line with its corkscrew tactics and its grandstand plate XGIs and its lies about the government that's trying to help solve their problems. You crusade for liberalism. The only kind of liberalism you know is in the purse strings of the Communist Party. It pours money into the pockets of men who have the brains of sincerity to hold a decent job. You pretend to fight racial discrimination, but you keep reminding me that I'm a Jewish American, that Sam down in the office is a Negro American, that Molly over here is an Irish American. We're none of us hyphens, we're just plain Americans. I sneer at me. Tell me I'm waving a flag, all right. But at least that flag has three colors in it, not one. Not one bloody one. Trotskyite. If I had my way, I'd... The committee will deal with him, Ivan. No one places themselves beyond the pale of party discipline merely by tearing up a guard. <laughs> I think you all understand that none of you are to associate with him until we have further instructions from the committee. 
Meeting is adjourned. I'm sorry this had to happen in front of one of your students, Nina. But at least we're beginning to find out who the loyal members are. Come on, Bill. Let's go. Okay. What are we going to do about Molly? Well, I'll have to talk to her tomorrow and tell her what she can expect if she associates with Solomon. For the next several weeks, Solomon learns what it means to be boycotted by the party and shunned by its membership. Outcast, pariah, taboo. He has begun to suffer the real meaning of those dismal words. are crowding in on him. The suffocating boredom of the drab apartment makes him irritable, restless. He must get out, go somewhere, anywhere. For hours, he walks the streets, searching for the friendly face of someone he knows, someone he can talk to and ease his troubled mind. Students from the workers' school who once greeted him as an oracle of the party now are deliberately obvious in their efforts to avoid speaking to him. He knows what they are saying, the cynical gossip as they sneer after him. Solomon the libertine, Solomon the drunkard, Solomon diseased, Solomon the traitor. Boycotted by the newspapers because of his subversive past, Solomon is compelled to take any job that offers. Filing clerk, stenographer, but one after another he loses those jobs, and always for the same reason. The boss wants to see Solomon. He's been expecting it every hour. At first, the office manager had been pleasant because of Solomon's intelligence and conscientious work. Now he acts like a different man, as though Solomon were his enemy. It hounds him wherever he goes sent by men who never forgive or forget. Wearily, he tries to tell that he has left the party of his own accord. But like the other bosses, the manager is sorry that it is against the policy of the firm to employ people who mix in alien movements against the United States government. Back to the hopeless round of the lonely streets, trying to stop the racing thoughts of a disintegrating mind. Back to the pounding thoughts of Molly, whom he must continue to avoid for her own welfare. they can do. Oh, I don't care what they do. I'm through with them. Yeah, I thought I was, too. It's not so easy. Goodbye, Molly. Take care of yourself. Oh, Henry, wait a minute.
close, Sam. Hi. Where's Partridge? He's in there, waiting for Mr. Vijay. I, I don't want to get you in trouble by talking to you, Sam. But uh, there's a favor you might do me for old time's sake. Well, if I can. Yeah, well, uh, I may be going away suddenly if I do. I'd appreciate it if you'd deliver this note. Come in. What do you want? Mr. Partridge, I, I want to talk to you about this. It's one thing to ostracize me, all right. We, we have ideological differences. But Molly, Molly isn't hurting anybody. She's been seen fraternizing with party renegades. That's, that, that's nonsense. She was just talking to me for a moment in the doorway. I'm not interested in the cheap amours of a common party. Suppose if I answered that the way I should. I mean more trouble for Molly. Very likely. There's just one favor that you could do for her if you were inclined to be so gallant. You could stop bothering her once and for all. Get out of her life. Get out of everybody's life. Is something wrong? The crazy fool Solomon just jumped out the window. talking to him and he jumped. Well, I'd better tell them over at party headquarters and see how they want to break it. tell you how sorry I am, Miss O'Flaherty. He was always so kind to me. Such a good friend. child. I'm glad to see you here. Hello, Father. Father, I... I'm sorry for the way I've lived. But I'm not sorry I loved Henry. You don't have to be sorry about that, child. He was a sincere man, a good man. The church doesn't condone suicide. But it realizes that sometimes when people take their lives, they are irresponsible, temporarily insane. The people in the party just hounded him to his death. You mustn't be bitter against them, Molly. They're misguided. They need our prayers. The best way to defeat communism is for us to live Christianity and American democracy every day of our lives. I know, Father. I'm... I'm glad I've come home.
didn't take anything but her own things. She's moved out all right. Yvonne, you move in here. And let this be a reminder to you all of how quickly you can be replaced. Lena, you've been very quiet. I hope you're not going to be sick again. Oh, no. I just have been thinking of some work I should be doing for the council. Perhaps you better get busy on it. She's still acting odd. More so all the time. Listen, Earl, I was right about Solomon and Molly, and I'm right about her. I tell you, you should do something about it. I'm going to. Have a watch from now on. Hello, Sam. Hi, Bill. Has Nina been here? No, I, I haven't seen her today. Something been bothering me. I'd like to ask you about it. What's that, Bill? It's about Solomon. Don't you think he got sort of a raw deal? Well, we're not supposed to look at it that way. To bring about the revolution, some people do have to suffer. But it's, it's what happens to the mass that counts. Yeah, I know. I've been trying to tell myself that, but it's hard to swallow. Oh, hello, Mr. V. Jack. They want to see you over at party headquarters, Jones. Okay. So long, Sam. See you, Bill. Headquarters wants us to give Solomon the works. How are you coming on your article about him? Well, I'm having trouble. Is that all you've written? Look, couldn't somebody else handle this? Solomon was always pretty fine to me. What are you doing, getting sentimental? You know what the party's doing for your race. And Solomon was a traitor to the party. Well, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Sam, busy? Oh, a little. Come on in. Just on my way home, drop by to see how he's getting along. Same as usual. Got something on your mind, Dad? Anything wrong at home? It's what's wrong here, son. <laughs> There's nothing wrong here. I'd say a man's suicide was something wrong, and you know it. Especially because he was a friend of yours. Oh, Solomon, you mean. Those, those things happen. Yeah, and how come that happened? That's what I want to know. And how come your paper used to say such nice things about Mr. Solomon suddenly switched? Seems like they couldn't think of anything nasty enough to say. Maybe he deserved what they said. Sam Wright, what's got into you? You used to cut out Mr. Solomon's poems and show them to Ma and me. And say how glad you was to be working with him. Well, things, things are different now. Part has changed his mind about him. And I, I have to think the way the party does. And it's a pretty poor party, that's all I gotta say. I'm beginning to believe some of the things I've been hearing about it. What kind of things? Deacon Smith was talking about your communism in church the other night. He says it's just using the color people just like it's using the GIs and other folks, just to stir up trouble. Maybe Deacon Smith should stick to his preaching. Look here, Sam. Don't you go upstaging me and my friends. Deacon Smith has read a few books, too. I'm sorry, Dad. I, I didn't mean any offense. Deacon Smith says slavery ended in the United States more than 80 years ago. But right today, there's more slaves in communist countries than there are any place or anywhere. From what you tell me, 
But about a man having to think as the party dictates, looks like we're having slaves here again. Come on, chuck it all, Sam, and go on home with me. That's what Solomon said in his note to Molly. Come on, Dad. Let's go home. Sam. Sam. Wasting our time on those African ingrates. Me, Bill. It's a little late, I guess, but I've got some news. Come in, Bill. I saw Partridge tonight. He said for me to drop in at headquarters tomorrow, and I'll be issued a party card. A party card? Why, yes. What's the matter, Nina? What's come over you? There must be something about the party. But you've been trying to get me in, haven't you? I've been trying. There was Tyler and Partridge and Yvonne. But they handed me over to you. You had me to your lectures, took me to meetings, showed me around. I've been trying to show you what communism really is, hoping you would leave it alone. Instead, you are accepting it. Not completely. I told you that. Maybe I wanted to be whatever you were, think the way you did. I don't know what to say. I came here to fight for the people's rights. But then I found that the people here have everything communism promises and denies wherever it seizes power. Well, they can't seize power here too easily. Not with only a few thousand members. But that's what they want you to think. In every country communism has conquered, the party membership was small. That's what they want. A small and highly disciplined group of fanatics, backed by thousands of fellow travelers. You should know if anybody does. Only I wish you'd told me all this before. I was afraid to, Bill. When I signed my immigration papers, I denied that I was a communist. And if you try to leave the party, they'll tell the State Department. Have you deported? I've got so that I don't care about that anymore. But I care about you. And I know what would happen if you would take that card. I don't want it to happen to you, Bill. Darling, we've got to get away from here. I couldn't get away from here, Bill. Let me show you. They're suspicious of me already because I wasn't bitter enough against Salomon because they sense how I feel about you. Look, Nina, we can go out the back way. You've got a car and we have a few dollars between us. But don't you realize they would be after us wherever we go, the party informers, the goon squads? Oh, listen, I know this country. We can head for New Mexico, Texas. We'll find some little place way off the beaten track. Oh, Bill, it's like learning to hope again. Hurry, Nina, pack some clothes.
Ought to be coming out pretty soon. Maybe he's staying. I would hurry it. Hurry, Nina, let's go. Okay. Nina, don't! Hey. See that? Take a look around back. Wait a minute. Hello, Miss Petrovka. Going somewhere? For a ride, maybe. You don't need a suitcase for that. We're taking you two to see Partridge. You're not taking us anywhere. <laughs> Bring in the bag. Yes, ma'am. We're from the immigration department, Miss Krauss. We want to have a talk with you down at headquarters. Where's your warrant? An immigration inspector doesn't need a warrant. What is this, more Gestapo methods? Where are our civil liberties? Let me go, do you hear? Let me go, I'm an American citizen. I'm an American citizen, you pay for this. Come on. Where were you born, Miss Cross? I refuse to answer this, Gestapo. I'm an American citizen. That's what we're trying to determine. If everything is in order, we'll let you go with an apology. I have nothing to be afraid of. I was born in New York City. When? May 4th, 1920. Your father's name? Friedrich Cross. Where was he born? Hamburg, Germany. He was naturalized. You took a trip to Mexico ten years ago, Miss Krauss. How long did you stay? Three months. It all seems to check with our records. I'll just sign this statement, Miss Krauss. Sure, why not? Now we'll just check this with the old files. Hmm. This doesn't check. What? What doesn't? The signature you just gave me is in a different handwriting than the signature of Yvonne Krauss on her passport application. But it does check with the handwriting of one Greta Block. That's a lie! I'm being framed. I know my rights. I demand a lawyer. Take it easy. You'll get a lawyer. We've taken a lot of abuse from you, so suppose you listen for a change. We've been watching you not only because of your communist activities, but because of your loudmouth disloyalty to the United States government. While Inspector Riggs kept you under surveillance, we made an exhaustive check. We found out the real Yvonne Krauss did go to Mexico in 1938 to open a pottery business. And we lost track of her, and so did the Mexican authorities. But the common turn got a hold of her passport and doctored it to fit Greta Block, with your picture and your signature. That's how you came into the United States. 
Besides that, you made a mistake here. A mistake that any German might make. It was the pronunciation you gave to the names Friedrich and Hamburg. The real Yvonne Krauss never spoke a word of German in her life. <laughs> You're too late. You're too late, I tell you. You don't know it. But the revolution is here. You're talking to Kamathor Black, you fools. You thought you could arrest me. Me, Kamathor Black. Yes, Ivan Kraus disappeared because she was murdered. But you can't touch the men who killed her. Von Kraus in Mexico. They did it on my orders. Try and arrest them now. Don't you hear them? <laughs> you fools! Don't you hear them? <laughs> We have files of evidence tying Partridge and Tyler into the murder of the original Yvonne Krauss. Good. Benson and Schultz were pulled in for the murder of young Riachi. Their confessions also implicate Partridge and Tyler. You'd better bring them in while I go into the case of Nina Petrovka. So now we understand what Bill and Nina are fleeing. Why their objective is an obscure hideaway halfway across the wide and sprawling continent. What's the name of this burg? Talbot, but don't ask me where it is. Well, it's in Texas. We know that much. Bill, why are we stopping? I've been thinking, Nina. What are we running away from? This is the United States, not a police state. Let's go see that sheriff. Have a talk with him. Try to make him understand. All right, Bill. Whatever you want. to come in and talk to you. Sure, go ahead. Have a seat. Okay. Chill. We want to give ourselves up, Sheriff. But first, I'd like to explain. Technically, we might be guilty, but actually, we're not. 
There never was one. And Nina tried to break with them. That's why they're after her and have tipped off the federal oh, authorities. Oh, back up a minute. Everything you've said so far is about as clear as a mud hole. Now, uh, first off, what are your names? I'm Bill Jones, and this is Nina Petrovka. Glad to know you. You look sort of tired and troubled. Now, I suppose you start telling what this is all about, and go far enough back so as I can understand you. And take your time. You know, there's lots of things we ain't got here in Talbot, but time ain't one of them. Well, Sheriff, I guess I'd better tell you what happened back in California. So, when we got here, we decided to give ourselves up and see what the law had to say. You know what? You folks have been running away from yourselves. From the fear in your own minds. Why, you've been messing around so long with the intrigue and underhanded methods of the communists that you've begun to think everybody acts the same as they do. You're no more wanted by the authorities than I am. But you don't know how they operate. They must have tipped off the State Department. Supposing they did. Federal government won't take any action until they make an investigation. And when they investigate, they'll find out how things are. You know, I read a lot of books. I have to, to keep up with things. And from what I understand, the communists don't give nobody a second chance. Now, that's where the United States is different. We give folks just as many chances as they deserve. Suppose this young lady of yours did perjure herself to government a few years back. She wouldn't today. Well, right now, she's probably a better citizen than lots of us. Because she knows the meaning of something that Bill Jones was trying to throw away. Guess you got yourself a little confused, eh, Bill? But not too confused to pick one of the swellest lookers I've seen in Texas. And that means I'm talking about the prettiest gals in the world. Well, don't mean to run out on you kids, but I gotta drive over to the next county and pick up Mike Tolliver. What did Mr. Tolliver do? He got himself drunk. I gave him 30 days, but the judge agreed to let him spend it in my jail. <laughs> kind of funny laws you have around here. Well, Mike's been shooting off his mouth that he can beat me at checkers. So we're going to find out. <laughs> what you two want to do is get yourselves hitched. Raise a couple of real American kids. And if you ever need a witness, I'll vouch for you. So long. Hello. So long. Oh, there's a great guy. Bill, we don't even know his name. Hey, Sonny. What's the name of that sheriff? Oh, him? It's some kind of a long name. But us kids, we call him Uncle Sam. Well, you heard what Uncle Sam said about getting hitched. And raising some real American kids. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye.